Hello, my name is John Wall. I'm a professor of philosophy, religion, and childhood studies at Rutgers University in Camden. I'm also director of the Childism Institute and co-founder of the Children's Voting Colloquium. I came to the field of childhood studies and children's rights through the discipline of ethical and political theory, which, however, unfortunately, uh, deal very little with children, let alone recognize that children are a third of the world's population. So my work has sought to develop a more productive relationship between these two areas, um, one in which childhood studies may be theorized in more complex ways, but at the same time, uh, th uh, theory itself may be better informed by the distinctiveness, differences, and diversities of childhoods. <clears throat> To these ends, uh, I've been involved with others in developing a uh, critical theory of childism. Childism is a theoretical lens akin to, but distinct from feminism, decolonialism, critical race theory, queer theory, post-humanism, and the like. I define it in my 2010 book, Ethics in Light of Childhood, as the effort to empower children by challenging and transforming social norms. Childism seeks both to deconstruct children's marginalization by a pervasive historical adultism and to reconstruct normative assumptions and structures in ways that empower children as children. This concept of childism differs from another and later development of the term in the field of psychology that refers to prejudice against children using the word in a way akin to sexism and racism. I prefer to describe children's marginalization or suffering from prejudice and discrimination with the longer used and more systemic term adultism and reserve the word childism instead for a lens of social critique that is not deficit or adult oriented, but pro-child and affirmative of children's own agency and differences. My own idea of childism is that children's lived experiences in all their diversity and their intersectionality call for new perspectives, not only on children's own lives, but also on the larger social relations in which children's lives are embedded. One way to understand childism in this childhood studies sense is as akin to third wave feminism. Third wave feminists called not only for women's equality for men, but also, and at the same time, that as in second wave feminism that was, but also, and at the same time, for a critique of the underlying normative frameworks defining gender norms in the first place. In the case of feminism, this critique yielded and yields broad new theorizations of things like social relationality precarity, interdependence, narrativity, and much else. And childism likewise calls for children's lived experiences to be contextualized in relation to the underlying adultistic frameworks in which their lives are rendered invisible and unheard. Indeed, uh, children are just as impacted by historical patriarchy as women, considering that patriarchy is the power of the pater or the father which is a figure that's both gendered and aged. Childism seeks to generate creative new theories that reconstruct how we think about and practice age in the very languages, concepts, and assumptions that define our social imaginations. A childist lens has informed the field of childhood studies from the start, but for the most part in implicit and under-theorized ways. Childhood studies initially emphasized in a way akin to second wave feminism and based on the then prevalent structuralism of the late 1980s and early 1990s, children's equal agency and participation to adults. It didn't generally put into question how this equality itself is normatively framed and understood. Since the early 2000s, the field has adopted a more post-structuralist set of theorizations from 
post-colonialism, decolonialism, queer theory, critical race theory, and so on, that strive to deconstruct the normative assumptions and hegemonies by which uh, children's life, lives and their lived experiences of difference are marginalized. But even post-structuralism is generally grounded in theorists who rarely consider childhoods or children as such. Rather, they're grounded originally in critiques of gender, race, class, and sexuality. And by disregarding age, may leave blind spots around children in their theorizations. So childish theory builds on these developments in childhood studies, but it does so in a way uh, that does not just apply critical theory from elsewhere to the lives of children, but also strives to apply the lives of children in turn to rethinking critical theory. This double move is in fact already underway in parts of the field. One could think of Barry Mayall's concept of generational order, for example, which applies age to understanding uh, adult-child relations, or Hannah Warming's method of child prism research, which takes children's experiences as a prism for seeing new dimensions of societies, or Erica Berman's notion of child as method, which uh, uses childhoods to open up new insights into societies. Childism takes a similar approach in that it not only negatively deconstructs children's social marginalization, but it also positively attempts to produce new theoretical frameworks and concepts. In my own work, I argue that childism produces, or has so far produced, three main theoretical innovations. The first of these is what I would call a hermeneutics of reconstruction. By this, I mean that childism insists that interpreting social phenomena, whether childhoods or not, must not only deconstruct, uh, but also in a more complex and dynamic way, reconstruct social ideas. Existing critical theories tend to assume that once social histories and norms are deconstructed, the voices and experiences of the marginalized can then empower or emancipate themselves. But children demonstrate above all that this does not accurately describe human nature. The very young make clear that those marginalized from power and understanding, whether young or not, do not revise power and understanding simply on their own terms. Rather, new social norms are shared projects of creating more expansive worlds together. As decolonial social theorists like Nesta Garcia Canclini, Mehmuna Musamitha, and Sarah Mazagora have also argued, demarginalization requires changes in thinking from all involved. The hermeneutics of reconstructionism means reinterpreting lived experiences of difference into radically inclusive social imaginations. An example of this reconstructive hermeneutics using the concept of childism can be found in a study by Jeanette Sundahl of attempts by the youth Gothenburg Youth Council in Sweden to fund a water slide at the annual Gothenburg Culture Festival. One block of the adult-run city council opposed the funding because it presented the, represented the wages of five city workers which they felt could be put to better use, while another block supported it because, quote, while this is a priority that may seem strange to many adults, the idea of the youth council was not that all of its decisions should be like the ones that adults would have made, but that new perspectives should come through, unquote. Ultimately, the second perspective prevailed, and Sundahl argues that, from a child's perspective, the second block can be interpreted to have been willing to expand their own adultistic normative assumptions and embrace children's differences as catalysts for reconstructing their own thinking in new ways. The youth did not just exhibit agency and voice, but in a more complex way, they reconstructed normative social interpretations 
of children's places in society. A second concept to emerge in childism is a fresh understanding of the nature of human being that could be called an ontology of deep interdependence. The ontology of deep interdependence is similar to feminist disability studies and decolonialist ontologies of interdependent relationality. But childism asks us to recognize that human interdependence has a certain generally acknowledged depth. Human and non-human being in the world is not just interdependent in what could be called a two-dimensional sense of being interconnected, mutually constructed, or interwoven in a web of relationality. Rather, uh, or in addition, it's three-dimensionally interdependent in the sense of being mutually empowering. We humans are horizontally relational as equals, but at the same time, also vertically dependent on each other for exercising and being represented by power. Like children, all of us are both self-empowered and other empowered at once. Human beings not only impact their social networks, but are also profoundly dependent upon them for resources, recognition, and empowerment. Indeed, childism can be said to view human nature four-dimensionally, insofar as these spatial dimensions must in addition be combined with temporality, that is, an interdependence that stretches backwards and forwards in time. An adultistic view tends to associate both vertical and temporal dependence with disempowerment. It assumes that power means acting for oneself in the here and now. But a childish view insists that as fully rounded beings, even our own power to disrupt hegemony depends in part on many layers of empowerment from others in the thickness of historical time. Every human being is at once self and other reliant and self and other empowering. This notion of deep interdependence can be illustrated in the work done by Tanu Biswas on childism and education. In a series of articles, Biswas argues that education needs to be rethought as fully a fully interdependent relationship. The normative assumption tends to be that adult is, is an adultistic one, that adults educate children. But from a childist point of view, education is interdependent, and, it, and it's an interdependent relationship in which adults should also let children teach so that learning can truly become self and socially questioning. This can involve education incorporating, for example, nonlinear temporalities, slowness, playfulness. It can redirect the educational mission to fostering an intergenerational relationship in which present adults seek to become good ancestors of the future. Children depend on the powerful adults in their lives to allow themselves to be educated by children. These theories of reconstruction and deep interdependence suggest finally a third childish concept, concept of what I would call the politics of empowered inclusion. This concept involves rethinking power. Power is both structured into historical languages and norms and able to oppose those hegemonies by rising up against their resulting marginalizations. But power should be used not just to challenge hegemony, but also to expand social relations. The concept of empowered inclusion adds to existing feminist and other conceptions of politics the idea that inclusion is achieved not only by making visible historical power imbalances, but also, and at the same time, by actively empowering social differences. It adds up to a deeply interdependent conception of social power. Justice is then achieved by a process of empowered inclusion that actively reconstructs more expansive social imaginations. This process of empowered inclusion can be illustrated in relation to my own work on children's suffrage. 
My 2022 book, Give Children the Vote, argues not only that all citizens of any age should have the right to vote, but also that expansions of suffrage have always relied on radically new social norms around what voting is and means. When suffrage was extended to landowners, to white men, poor men, minority men, women, and 18 to 20 year olds, it was not just a matter of giving the same idea of democratic voting to more people. In each case, the expansion is accompanied by a fundamental restructuring of the very meaning of democracy itself. Likewise, if children are no longer to be discriminated against in this regard, and instead their different voices empowered to improve democratic societies, then voting itself needs to be rethought as not just individual, but interdependent rule. That is the empowered inclusion of social differences. Childism is a critical theory then that empowers children by deconstructing adultism in order to reconstruct more expansive social norms. It's time for childhood studies to, to develop a critical theory of its own, a theory that as in feminist and other work provides a generalizable critique of the largely invisible biases pervading histories, societies, and the academy. Childism can only be effective if used intersectionally with other critical perspectives. But these perspectives in turn need childism to work effectively themselves. Without concepts like reconstruction, deep interdependence and empowered inclusion, researchers and practitioners cannot grasp the complexity of the human condition. Thank you. <laughs>